Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we're going to have a quick look at the Linux Mint 19.2 beta. This has been released in all of the flavors that they have. So their flagship Cinnamon, XFCE, and Mate. So you can actually head on over to the Linux Mint blog, blog.linuxmint.com. Grab the download links for whatever version you would like, and you can read through all of the release notes. Now, the one we're going to look at here is the Cinnamon release notes, and we will boot this up into a virtual machine and kind of show you the things that are the same, things that are different. A lot of the things you're going to see are going to be the same. Your primary uh, primary changes are surround the updates, the kernels, and then there's a few other really good cinnamon things that they have dropped in. So we'll actually kind of go through this list, uh, not right now, but we will kind of go through this list as we um, as we are actually plugging through. And I I have my notes here, so we will uh, we will be in good shape. Now, overall, uh, this is going to ship with cinnamon 4.2, so we have a little bit of an update to the latest cinnamon the default kernel is 4.15 but you have options to go up to 5 and i think 418 maybe we'll look at that and of course this is based on the ubuntu 1804 uh, lts so let's go on over and have a look at our login here so we are installed into a virtual machine the first major thing we see in a virtual machine is instead of the upper corner first initial notification is it's actually going to tell us that we are loading into uh, instead of saying loading into software rendering mode it instead tells us to check your video drivers because it's running without video hardware acceleration. So you have the option right here to launch your driver manager. You do need your password for that. And when this guy loads up, it's going to update the cache and then check your system for any drivers that could be installed. Now, this is the same method if you're having issues with your Wi-Fi card or anything else on your system. Boot up this driver manager and see. Now, of course, if it's your Wi-Fi card, you'll have to get Internet to your computer some other way. Um, one of those very well, let's go ahead and install this guy. One of these guys very well may be uh, plugging in your phone and bridging the internet connection from your phone. Another option might be using a wireless USB dongle or if you have an ethernet port on your computer or hey, this is Linux and it's portable. Take the hard drive out, drop it into a computer that does have, have an ethernet cable and you are good to go. Um, I don't actually want to restart the computer right now. I want to get into the video. So uh, if we were to boot this back up, it's going to load up with a, um, hardware acceleration. It probably would work a little bit snappier, but I haven't actually noticed any real degradation here. Now, of course, we are greeted with the welcome screen and we get into our first steps. Our first steps is uh, it's something that you would be familiar with and nothing here has changed. Uh, setting up system snapshots, running your driver manager, update manager, desktop layout, system settings, etc. You will notice, wow, that scroll bar is huge. Yes, that is one of the new options. Some people were complaining about the size of the scroll bar, so they added the option to toggle that. So I played with it and made it really big. I will show you how to do that. And uh, that will not apply to absolutely everything, but most things. So I literally even think it'll work on like Firefox as well. Um, so let's go ahead and boot this guy up and let's just go ahead and there you go. You can see the scroll bar is really big on Firefox as well. Looks like we do have a very new version of Firefox installed here. I can kind of tell from the uh, little user notification over here. So 67. So yeah, brand new. Of course, this is Linux Mint always tweaks their own Firefox as well. Some people have hated that over the years. I don't really care about it. All right, now for whatever reason, I'm not getting my update thing is not showing there. I'm not sure why. Um, that is something that uh, I've been running this and testing for a little while now. And this is the first time I have not seen the update notification. So anyway, here is our update manager. And one of the major changes is if you come down here and view your Linux kernels, it does give you this warning sign. I generally recommend not tinkering with your kernels because that can cause some issues. But if you are allowable to go through this, of course you can check the box. You'll see we have 415, which is actually the default for 18 and 5.0. I switched this kernel over to 5.0. 
The other major things it tells us is that it tells us how long they're supported to. So 5.0 is supported until February 2020. So I got six months on that. I can go over here, supported until August 2019. And 415 is actually, this is an LTS kernel, is supported until April 2023. Okay, so the superseded, these guys, uh, you don't really want to be using those anymore. You actually can come over here and uh, you can go ahead and remove some kernels as well. So you have the ability to do that. Now that would remove, if I hit this, it doesn't remove just the little version. It removes the whole thing from the very top level, which is something I don't necessarily want to do. Now I know I won't use 418, so I can go ahead and use remove 418. That's no big deal. Of course, it does want my password, which you do have to enter correctly. So uh, we do have the options there inside of your kernel manager to add your kernels. And I do like the fact that they do give us that Linux kernel 5 out of the box, which I think a lot of the reason they're doing that is that the Linux kernel 5 is, it's not an LTS, which Linux Mint likes to use, but it does have in it, um, it will have in it the, all the newest hardware. So if you're running a latest Ryzen, a brand new computer. So I think that was a good happy medium. They put in the LTS and then you have the easy ability to go on and actually install the Linux kernel 5. Now there are some options as well. Um, I think some of that's fine. You are seeing that it does want us to install, set up system snapshots, which I'm not going to do here. Um, we do have other options as well. I was trying to look for where these were and I haven't found them yet. Maybe it's something that's um, very, uh, very easy to find or I'm just missing. But somewhere in here you can blacklist either packages or kernels. Of course, you could always come over here and ignore the current update or, or, or ignore, ignore all future updates for a current package. So that's an option you can do and you got to this by right, uh, excuse me, by, yeah, by right clicking. So if I wanted to lock in my LibreOffice version, I could ignore this current update or I could ignore all updates for LibreOffice. Speaking of LibreOffice, let's just go ahead and have a quick look what version we are running with on LibreOffice. That's something I always like to do. And Linux Mint generally works fine. Now there was one bug in the past and I don't know if they resolved it, where if you were a person that worked with databases, databasing support did not always work out of the box with it. I'm not sure if that's completely fixed. It was a simple fix to it, but just something to be aware of. Um, everything else would work and you know, not everyone does databasing. So about LibreOffice, so we are in the, oh really, we're still in the 6.0, really? Debian's version of LibreOffice is newer than Linux Mint's? That's weird. All right, but anyway, it is. Uh, I was hoping to be able to come into here. If you are using 6.2 or later, you can actually come over here and inside of your toolbar layout, you will have the option for a ribbon mode as well if you like those ribbons. That's actually a little odd to me. Um, I, I didn't notice that really because mine I actually use, um, I use the repos to keep mine always at the latest version, so something there. All right, so other changes. Inside of our Cinnamon itself, um, we actually have, the first thing is they actually reduced the amount of memory that Cinnamon itself takes by about 30%. Now, right now we're running under one gig of RAM and we have six gigs applied to this machine. Um, now, something though about Cinnamon is if you have more RAM, it will utilize more RAM to speed things up. If you have less RAM, it will utilize a little bit less RAM. So I'm not as concerned about the actual number here in my RAM as I am with system performance. So for example, GNOME, they are getting so much better on memory usage that my memory usage can be really small, but still the system oftentimes runs sluggish to me. And so I like Cinnamon that generally it doesn't run sluggish for me no matter what I'm doing with it. And so I'm not concerned as much with the number of the RAM, but some people will. Now, another new awesome feature inside of this, we have to go into the software manager for this and we have to install a package. Uh, because we do have GIMP installed here and let's see what version of GIMP we have. Um, so we are still on version 2.8 of GIMP. That is also an odd choice. Um, but I like that personally because I have found that GIMP 2.10 actually has some bugs in it that 
actually interfere with my workflow quite a bit. So I actually prefer running GIMP to, to um, 2.8. But if we were to go into here and we were to look at GIMP in the search here, you see that GIMP is installed, but we should also have a flat pack version of GIMP in here. And if I don't see it right here that I'm gonna do, I don't see it directly right here. We're gonna go ahead and search GIMP directly in the flat pack. So here is GIMP here. So if you do need 2.10, uh, this one here will get you 2.10 and let's go ahead and install it. And there's method to my madness. So we're going to show you what that is in a second. Now, while this installs, which is gonna take a moment, we're gonna run into our system settings. And if you head over to your themes and head on over to your options, now we will have the option down here to adjust your scroll bar. So if you wanna drop your scroll bar back down, I wish they showed us what the default was, uh, what the old default scroll bar used to be, but you can go really huge. So here's what the scroll bars look like, huge. Or you go, you know, microscopic. This is what they would look like there. Very hard to use. I think like somewhere around 10 or 11 or so is the default. Now, when you make this change, you have to re, uh, you have to reset the computer. Like you have to log out and log back in in order to see that. But you now can switch the scroll bars. Or um, if I'm not completely sure, I can just toggle this guy off, and it will not do that anymore. Now again. It's gonna stay like this until I log out and log back into the system, but you do have the option there to adjust your scroll bars. All right, um, other options. Um, inside of your documents, you have the ability to pin. Now this doesn't work quite as well as, a bin, as Ubuntu's new pinning option. If I remember correctly, I think they had a way to search for pin folders on the side. Maybe my memory's fuzzy. But what pinning is actually going to do is when you pin a document, it will always appear in the top of your list. So I'm gonna create some new documents. We're gonna go a doc. We're going to go, let's go with um, Z doc. And then this guy is a pinned doc. So you'll see here that it'll do by alphabetical order but if I want to pin a document, it will appear at the top of the list. So if there's photos you wanted to pin, when you navigate into that individual folder, your pinned documents will be at the very top. All right, let's see. Uh, there was actually something else in the context menu, but I don't remember exactly what it was. Did that have something to do with the properties, I think, maybe? I don't remember, there was something else there and I didn't pay a lot of attention to it, which I should have done that. All right, so the other change we're not gonna show you here today is uh, Samba shares. If you're setting up Samba shares, they've done some updates to that. It will automatically add itself into the uh, firewall if you have your, your basic firewall set up. So you won't have to do your Samba shares and then fight with your firewall doing things like that. All right, and while GIMP is still waiting on its final thing, let's go ahead and have a look at the new artwork they gave us. Change desktop background, and let's go ahead and roll this up there just so I can keep an eye on that install. All right, so we have, we still have some of the old classic, still have some of the old classic guys, woo, and then we have a few newer ones. I think this is a newer one. I don't remember seeing this one before. That's pretty sweet. So I think we just have that one basic one. Now, this is of course Tina with Terra Tessa Tina. So these are the images we have. Let's see if there's any overlap on these. I'm not sure there are. But down here into Tina, you'll see here that we have some nice new artwork. So here's Moss. That's just beautiful, look at that. I'd say that's more wild wheat, not wildflower, but whatever, you know. Why not? All right, there's some tulips. Very nice artwork. I, one of the things I really love about Linux Mint is they just give us some gorgeous artwork here. some lavender. Just one more moment for that GIMP to show up. I want to show you uh, one more major thing there. 
Lily of the Nile, Blue Mountains. Ooh, that's nice. Snow. Is this the same picture on my Mac Yosemite? I don't know. Let's go ahead and run with our Blue Mountains for now. All right, so where we're getting at here with this guy here is they've added a new feature inside of uh, inside of your menu that if uh, this has been something that has been showed up in the past where if you have two applications which have the same name, something like a simple text editor, you'll see this just says text editor. Well, there's a few different options you might have that all say text editor. Now what it's going to do is it's going to give you more information. Now, this is actually quite significant because on my main production Linux Mint computer, where I actually do graphic work and web design work and things like that, I actually do have 2.8 and 2.10 of GIMP installed, and you cannot tell from the menu which one's which unless you manually go into the menu and change that. Now, how might you do that? Um, if you just come over here, right-click on the menu, hit Configure, come on over to your menu and open your menu editor, you can actually grab a application and you can rename the application. I think you can rename, well you used to be able, oh there it is, yep. So over here, so I can rename the application. So if you, I could come into here and I can manually set one of my applications as my new application And then what that would do is that would, I mean, I didn't, uh, apparently I did not get that right. Let me try that again. Now it should show up as that. It might not show up until I reset the system. But what it's going to do now is when we have an extra application installed is it's going to show us more information about it. Now that that's done, let's close this out. Now we come under our graphics. Now we can see that we have more information so I know which one is my 2.8 and which one is my flat pack. All right, now the one last update to this, which is not gonna be on the system, but it is going to be on your installation media. So you wanna keep a copy of your installation media around. They have actually added a boot repair option to our installation media. So um, if you are having issues with your system, you wanna keep that, that uh, thing around. And uh, if we come down to the very bottom of our information, we'll find the information about it. So here is our boot repair. So this is on the installation media that you get. So if you have some issue where your system will not boot up, you can actually plug your ISO back in and you can run the boot repair on the individual computer. This is actually a pretty big deal. In fact, what I might actually do is I might actually look at this because I actually killed a, uh, I killed a boot on one of my Linux distros. I'm like, eh, I don't care. I'll, I'll mess with it later or I'll just overwrite it. I'm gonna try and run this thing and see if it actually works. Um, that'd be an interesting experiment to try. So those are your basic updates to Linux Mint 19.2 beta. Um, as, as usual, my recommendations, if you're looking for Linux Mint, absolutely do this. If you're already running Linux Mint and you're on 19.1, I would probably go ahead and update. I think that you're gonna get enough out of this to make it worth your while. If you're still running an 18.3, I personally am holding my 18.3 computers back on 18.3 just because I think the Ubuntu 16.04 LTS is a better overall LTS than the 18.04 LTS. So if you're running Ubuntu 18.3 and it's not giving you any problems, I wouldn't be as fast to upgrade. If you are running 19.1, I probably would upgrade because you are gonna get enough for these updates. So that is the conclusion of what's uh, changed with Linux Mint 19.2.